Thank you. It's 6.30. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Sean Cleary. Okay, unmute myself. So I, um, thank you, gentlemen. My name's Sean Cleary. Um, I talked to Bill uh, on the telephone uh, about my situation and um, I don't know how much information you're interested in. I did send out an email. So I'm happy to give a little sort of uh, capsulation of uh, what my situation is and what I'm, what I'm looking to do. Uh, about a year ago, I think it was Mar May of uh, last year, I bought three Railroad Street from Walter Bashara and his niece, uh, Jackie Allard. I've been a tenant in the building at that point for, I think, four years running a sign shop. Give you a little history about the building, which you guys probably know more about than I do. It was built uh, by Walter's father in 1983. <clears throat> um, it's a two unit commercial building. There's two large overhead bay doors on either side of a couple of central doors. So you have you know, a, a two bay garage on one side, a two bay garage on the other, some offices down the middle. Walter told me that about a year after the building was built, they decided to add a one bedroom apartment. That's on the second floor. Uh, it's a nice little apartment. I have a tenant up there. Super nice guy, he's a farrier. Um, and uh, the, historically the building's been used for auto body. That's what Walter himself did for several years. And there was uh, auto repair business um, most people in town know the gentleman who ran that. He retired. I can't recall his name at the moment. I didn't know him. He retired uh, right as I was coming into the building. Uh, after I think after Walter got out, Duncan Ferguson uh, moved in with his sign business. That was April of 2008. And he ran it until 2014 when... I merged him with my company and we continued running a sign shop out of this, out of the, you know, the, uh, the Western side of the commercial part of the building. Um, Duncan retired about a year after the merger and I've been running it as a sign shop ever since we have a CNC machine cuts out, cuts and carves. And we also have a uh, flatbed printer here. We also do like vehicle lettering and wrapping and stuff like that. So that's how we've been using the space. Uh, let's see. I got into, I was formerly a lawyer. I, some of you folks know me as having been a lawyer. Uh, what happened was I got a little disillusioned with that work. And, and so in 2011, I was looking for another opportunity some friends of mine, they were actually clients, owned uh, Copycat in Amherst. So long story short, I bought that. I got out of being a lawyer and I got into the printing business. And the printing business is how I got into the sign business. I did change the name of Copycat uh, around 20, I don't know, 2014 to Amherst Copy. Uh, and I've uh, been running it ever since. And it, it, it actually, it's been a great business for me and for my family. Uh, things have been going just super with it. We've grown every year. The signs have been a great addition. Uh, and then, you know, we got to March of this year and, um, uh, you know, we had a, a, a wicked downturn. Uh, we've had some bounce back from that, but frankly, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're struggling and I'll just be honest, we're struggling. Many, 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 many businesses are, you know, I was talking about that today with one of my, actually my manager, you know, and if you're working through this pandemic, you know, it, it's like either you're out of work, which is awful. Uh, it's good for a little while and then it gets awful. Or you don't have enough work, which is very stressful, or you're buried, right? So it's sort of like no one's really in normal anymore or, or very few. Um, 
So uh, anyway, looking at the whole situation, it made a lot of sense to me that I wanted needed to cut my overhead. Um, and, you know, this owning this business or this building, excuse me, um, I really started to look at, wow, you know, if I could get my whole thing under one roof, we we're going to give up that great location in Amherst, but uh, we're going to have everything together. We're going to have a lot of efficiency. We're not going to have to keep driving back and forth like we do. Uh, and obviously, we're going to have a lot of savings as far as our overhead. So, uh, and not to mention, you know, the Hadley has been a really great spot for us. You know, I'm getting to know, have been getting to know uh, the neighbors, the business neighbors right around here who are all fantastic and, and have been really kind to me. Um, and I think there's a really strong ecosystem here right around this little area that's, that's going to really work. Um, you know, once we get all of our operations here. So the plan right now is to leave the sign shop alone. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. We, we, I had a tenant over on the east side of the building. He was an interesting guy. Um, he sold 1960s period furniture, like you see on uh, some TV shows, like from the 60s. That was his thing. So he'd get that furniture. And he mostly just stored it there, but it'd go in and out. Anyway, I did ask him, uh, you know, to voluntarily leave so I could use the space. And he agreed to do that. Uh, it was kind of bittersweet because he's a really nice guy. So uh, what we'd like to do is just take that space and make a very simple remodel inside the building. There wouldn't be any change in floor space. We just would add lighting, the electrical we need, a small remodel to make a, an office for myself and the bookkeeper. We want to have a little break room and we need like kind of a room, small room where all the computer cables come into that kind of feed all of our equipment. We're very heavily uh, electronic in, you know, in, with our equipment. Uh, we'd keep the garage doors, you know, they wouldn't go up and down very often, but, you know, we have the one bay where we work on, we work on the vehicles in the sense of we decorate them and we occasionally receive a delivery, you know, through one of the other doors. Most, most of the traffic in and out is going to be through the human doors on the front of the building. As far as what we're proposing uh, to change, on the exterior, I, I did circulate a couple of uh, PDFs. The first one, and I can share those if you guys, if I'm allowed to share my screen, I can put them up. I did uh, circulate them around to everyone, but I'm happy to let you share the screen in case anybody has any questions. Cool. All right, let me see if I can do that. Host disable, it says. Um, there we go. Let me see. So this this one here, hopefully you guys can see it. This is the uh, east side of the building. The bottom would be where the two bay doors currently are and are going to remain. And it just shows what the layout inside is going to be. All those big black things with the red lines. That's our equipment. Um, and then around the outside wall, we're just going to have counters and bookshelves to hold the paper that we use. And just to the, to the right-hand side, I don't know if you can see my pointer, this would become the office, kitchenette. This would be where we keep the, the server computer and all those wires that go to it. There's a restroom on either side. You'd be able to pass from the, from the print shop here right into the sign shop through this passageway here. And that's, that's the extent of the interior renovation that we would do. Um, and then I get, I circulated, this is the outside of the building as it looks today. If you're sitting over on that picnic table by the rail trail, um, you know, you guys, I'm sure are all familiar with it. And here's what we're proposing. We have 
we do a lot of fine art stuff, and I didn't really stress that in the email. Your screen, we have, you, we, you, you haven't changed your screen. We still have the. Uh, oh, you still seeing the other one? Sorry. Floor plan. That. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Where am I? New share. Okay, got it. Uh, okay. So this is, that's the proposed. We have a bunch of artists who rely on us for like their, you know, fancy printing. We have like this 11 color printer and we sell a lot of prints, like almost like a, uh, like a similar to a frame shop. These four are um, from an artist, you know, she's a photographer um, and she's in the store a lot. These are all Hadley Barnes, or the three of them are. I, I wouldn't necessarily want to limit the murals to Barnes. Um, I would want them to be like agricultural scenes. Um, or, for instance, my wife was saying, you know, the Connecticut River would be a good one. Like, they, they got to be, for me, they got to be like quintessentially Hadley. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't Sean. really... Go ahead. Uh, we call those tobacco sheds, okay? <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. About They're not that. necessarily barns or tobacco sheds, which, you know, were you a smoker in a former life? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I uh, like them. We, I like them. We also depicted the windows. You know, what we'd like to do is put uh, like garage door style windows. I actually already bought some off of. Uh, uh, Jerry Devine, haven't put them in yet because they would change the uh, street side. And then we'd stripe here. We'd probably do like a half light, you know, a window in the top of the door because it's important for people to be able to like see into the building if they're coming in. You know, the, the, the entrance for people is super important. Like, you know, if, you're, if it doesn't look friendly and inviting, they, they may not come in. Although we got a lot of customers already. I also would like to kind of do something like a little um, raise something up maybe and have flowers. We have a flower garden that we put up in our Amherst store out in the front. And for the gardener type customers, they just go nuts about that. And, like this, this last year, it was a pollinator garden and it really beautifies it. It's really attractive and, and people seem to, you know, respond well to it. Final point on these murals, we would, these are not, there would be no advertising or anything on them at all. Nothing other than the photograph blown up. Um, you know, I happen to drive by L.L. Bean, you know, it's the same idea. Like, you know, when you see that photo on the L.L. Bean store, you kind of recognize that it is related to L.L. Bean. But there's no writing on it. There's no uh, nothing other than that nice outdoor scene. So that's the idea. If people want to know who took the photo, they'd have to come in and ask us. Um and then all, I guess just the only other thing is, you know, we'd like to replace the windows or single pane windows in the rest of the building. Um, they're super drafty. I mean, it's in the wintertime. It's like really, we, we've blocked a few of them completely off. Um, so we'd like to change those out. Um, I think that's everything. So I'm, I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can get it done as quick as I can with the least amount of disruption to my business. Um, you know, we think it's going to be great for, you know, for this part of town. I, you know, I, I love my business. I, I think it's going to be a plus. I mean, I hope you guys will agree, you know, but that'll be up to you. So that's, I think that's everything. Okay. You gave it, you, you probably don't know some of the, let's say, not so nice history about this building. It doesn't comply with zoning. Now, don't, first of all, I'm not knocking your project. Don't take it that way. I just want you to know some of the other side of what you to, were talked to, told about the building. Yeah, sure. Up, it's, it doesn't comply with zoning in a number of ways. 
um, parking, open space, setbacks, and stuff like that. So just leave it at that. It's grandfathered because it's been there for so long. It is what it is. I just want you to know that. Um, I think what you're proposing for the building um, is a definite improvement. It looks nice. Thank you. Okay, I think it also fits with the nature, the resurgence of Railroad Street. We got quarters across the street. Now we got kind of an Art Deco building there. Who knows what's coming next? So are you, are you adding the, uh, the columns and the, uh, the roof over the door or is that that's, there? Now? That was, that's one of the last things Walter did. Um, I think that was installed like, uh, 2018 or 2017. He told me he had a, uh, he had gotten, uh, variance i'm not sure what he got he said and i actually didn't uh look for paperwork on that but that is existing there now we would we'd modify it so you you know to put our sign in that triangle area like it like that that seems like the right spot for the sign about how many employees will you have so right you know before this all started in March. I had uh, myself, my manager, one, two, three, and then my kids, you know. So I had, depending on the season, eight to 10 employees. I've allowed some attrition to occur over the last few months. Like we dropped a designer. Um, and I have other people because of what their childcare situation is, are working less hours. So we're down to five for now. Um, it could, you know, it could grow again. But part of being in the building is means we're going to need less help because we don't have to go back and forth. It's a fifteen minute ride from here to Amherst Center. Because the only one, one of the concerns is if you get busy again and you have a couple of customers, there's, there's not enough parking on that site for, let's say, eight to 10 employees and customers. Well, OK, so in all honesty, three of the employees are my family, my daughters. Well, I've got the one daughter who's in 10th grade. She works on Saturdays only, which is a slow day. My other daughter is taking a gap year this year because of the COVID and she got a job at Target. She seems to like that better than working for her father. And the last person is my wife who basically never comes on site. I, I hear what you're saying on the amount of parking. Um, to, the, to the west of the building is grassy area. I don't know if we could use that to park or not. I think they used to park cars there. We don't because it's grassy and, we, and I'd rather keep it grassy. Well, th that's all that, that whole thing is get what I'm getting bad at zoning is, you know, what you're proposing, I don't have a problem with. I want to, I'll be honest with about that, but you're limited to how much you can grow or expand on this site because, you know, we don't want you parking on the grass if possible, because that's supposed to be the open space for open space. Right. Um, your parking area in front of the building You'd be hard pressed. It's virtually impossible to park too deep there. If you did, the one closest to the building wouldn't be able to get out. I'm just, I'm not criticizing what you want to do. I'm just pointing out to you that you're limited yep. to your future capabilities at the building. That's all. Sean. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Is, is, I, how much larger is this building workspace in the place you had in Amherst? So, interestingly enough, it's about the same amount of space as Amherst, 1,600. You know, the two bays are approximately 1,600 square feet, but it's more usable than the Amherst space. So, it's going to feel bigger to us. Um, and the way we are right now, I mean, I don't, you know, honestly, guys, I don't know if my business is going to grow or shrink and, you know, I, yeah, I don't know what the future holds and I'm concerned about it. You know, I, I sell a lot of paper, 
And the pandemic is, you know, people are using less paper than ever because they got kind of compelled. We're having this meeting on Zoom for a reason, right? I'd normally be passing out, you know, copies of my stuff to everybody. So When you, when you talk about growth and this type of business, what does growth actually mean? It just means pushing more product out the door, right? Yeah. And this location allows me to use less people to do that. Exactly. You know, we don't, I don't have to have a guy come down and just work here, pushing stuff out. I can have somebody who's already, it's more efficient for me. I need less help. I'm, I'm real sure about that. So what are your, uh, what's your customer flow? How do people, did people walk in to place an order? How many people do you have? Yeah, we have, you know, we use a point of sale, like cash register that it can tell us very accurately, you know, how many transactions we're having and what time of day we get them. So we get from the time we open to the time we close, we, we have customers dropping off, picking up. They tend to come, we get a few more at lunchtime when they run their errands. And then interestingly enough, 3.30 to 5.30 is another busy time. I would have thought five on, but people get out of work earlier. So, you know, same thing. They're dropping off, picking up. So our peaks around lunch and the end of the day. And as far as our cousin, and, and we do have drop-ins, you know, we have fax service and people just doing simple things as well. We think we're going to see a lot less of those folks in this location. And that remains to be seen. But, you know, Amherst, you got all those new buildings right around there. And so we definitely had quite a bit of, uh, you know, the people printing out their return ticket for their Amazon item or whatever. Um, which, frankly, we'll be happy not to see them. You know, that, it might sound, you know, printing out one piece of paper, it's the time it takes my staff to help the guy do that. I'm, I'm basically losing money on that. So it's a drop in. It's pretty steady. Goes up and down around lunch and the end of the day. We do a lot of delivering. We do free delivery. If your order's over, you know, $75, we do a lot of pickups, a lot of our signed stuff. We go out and install it or drop it off wherever it's going. Um, so, you know, that's part of our business model, too. What about how many customers do you see during a day? Well, it really varies. I mean, you know, right now in August, we're hardly seeing any. Uh, but that's normal. Uh, we have our busier months are going to be September and October. Uh, September, October, we could have, you know, a couple dozen customers a day. Uh, but again, they never all come at once. I mean, we rarely have more than uh, a couple of customer cars in the parking lot. And, and most of the time, we don't have any customer cars in the parking lot. You know, they come, they do what they're doing, and they, they go. Uh, like a drugstore. You know, they're just picking up, dropping off. Um, and, you know, like I said, this time of year, I mean, you know, it's ridiculous. No one, no one's thinking of us at all. Uh, so, I mean, I can, I can pull that information for you, gentlemen. I can provide that right out of my point of sale system. And you can see over time, you know, when the when the visitors come when you know really you can, what you can tell is when we're using our cash register when what when we're bringing them up certainly sean this hi this is joseph Rodnick. uh certainly this is the pre-existing non-conforming use and we can see the improvements and uh it has its limitation, and if you grow, good luck to you. I'm sure you'll have enough money to buy a bigger space, but nevertheless, uh, as, as long as you don't park on the street, this is, uh, this is a concern. And it was a concern about the garage uh, to the west of you for a while, and then the, uh, the quarters place, too, was having some issues, but those have been taken care of. So uh, I think it's a beautiful improvement. 
I like the doors and uh, I'll give my nod of approval. Thank you. So I'll make a motion to waive site plan approval for expansion of an existing business and welcoming a refugee business from Amherst. Uh, that won't be in the motion. Uh, <laughs> with uh, adding murals and door windows. It's, it's not in the motion, but could you include it in the minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that motion. Do we have a motion and a second? Um, any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four zero with one absent. I will get a note out to the building inspector, Sean, and with the next couple of days, just a simple little form. And uh, of course, you know that this doesn't waive, you've, you've waived the site plan approval, but any other, any other things, I think you've already seen the form. You still got to comply with building code, electrical, and all the rest of the stuff. Yes. Yeah. Signed and returned the uh, disclaimer form. Okay. And I sent that around to everyone. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, gentlemen. I'm I'm really grateful for this. I think um, you know, uh, particularly with the murals, if we're able to, since we're going to be able to do that, or it looks like we are. You know, that's going to really help the business. If we just had to be the blank garage doors, I think it'd be a lot tougher on us. That rail trail gets a ton of people riding up and down on their bikes and so on. And um, it's just going to really help us. And not only help us, I think it's really going to look great. I think you're going to be real pleased. We're going to be a good neighbor. You know, we're not we're not a car intensive business. So I don't, you know, we won't, we won't park on the street. We won't park on the grass we'll we'll park in you know it'll be orderly and it'll i i think you'll be you'll be pleased with us i hope so thank, thank you thank you Thanks, okay all right have a great night you too thank you okay denise barstow do you have something or are you just here to listen Dylan and i are just here to listen okay okay That's fine um Let's see. Next up, we have no other walk-ins, walk if you would. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Authorized chair to sign PVC contract. I'll make a motion to authorize the chair to sign the PVC PVPC contract. Second. But Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes again. Four zero one. So I did send it around to everyone. Uh, Jim, if you just check that it's budgeted for the 7,500, I think that was a question we had. That was the that was the budget that was approved at town meeting. Right. So the, I just want to be sure the contract says the same amount. Oh, okay. Okay. I think it did. Let's see. What is the discussion? Affordable trust fund. Mike, could I think I might have it someplace? Could you send me your form? Just your even your your writing formula that you had for doing the uh, stuff, just email it to me. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're just gonna. You, this this thing is uh, it's as good as the input, and the question is, what is the input going to be? I think you and I, Jim, talked about the fact that perhaps included in the life cost of the building, we wouldn't include insurance costs and taxes. So we that that can be put if, if we included that, then the. The amount going into the trust would be more, but uh, yeah, right. I'll send this. To you. I'll I'll take a picture and send it over. We can talk That'd about be it. Yeah, because I'll take I'll take it and this kind of put it into a formula form and put the right words to it. It'll kind of put it into almost like yeah. a motion form, and then we can uh -huh. look at it and see if that's what we want to go forward with for the yeah. meeting. Okay. I right. understand is if interest rates go up and rents stay the same. Then the amount that's going to go, and, and I, I, if interest rates go up, mortgage rates go up, then the amount that's going to come into the trust is going to be more. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking that if interest and, rates go and, up, and, and, perhaps perhaps rents will go up too. You don't know. And if yeah, I mean it, it, it's a that's exactly correct. I mean it's a such a matter of if, if interest rates go up and somebody builds, they're either going to pay it out of their pocket over the long term, or they're going to pay yeah. it up front to the fund. Exactly. Either way, it's going to cost. And, uh, you know, I, I put in there, you know, the 15-year mortgage rate, and, and I'm not sure that 
a builder's cost of money is necessarily the 15-year mortgage rate, okay? But we can talk about that. That's changeable, too. Yeah. Might be a little less, but close enough. Okay. Any, any other comments on that one? No. Procedures, we have anything? Uh, not, uh, not really. Okay. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll put these two under future topics. Um, I mentioned I had been speaking with Mark Darnold. He was calling because the, um, the hotel we approved for the Parmars, uh, opposite the Hadley family, uh, medicine building. Yep. Um, I forget what the, what the trade, what the trademark was going to be on that one. But, um, the state is going around talking to individual landowners about how much they're going to lose. Right. <clears throat> and, um, I did have a call from Amy Fiden last week. Uh, East, Ham uh, East Hampton Savings is going to have to move its sign. And Mark Darnold was calling on behalf of the Parmars that um, they are going to have to move their sign as well. <clears throat> and Randy was in a few weeks ago with some concerns about other people. So what I said to Mark was that I didn't think we would need to be reopening site plan approval for changes required by the road widening, uh, that we probably could handle things as long as the sign was being moved proportionally back as far as the roadway taking required. <clears throat> and as long as it didn't affect sight lines in its new location, we would be willing to handle these things administratively. I agree. I agree too. Yeah. I mean, this is way, this is way beyond the control of anybody that has a, property along Route 9 area that's affected, and to make them go through any kind of an additional what is not, it's just not prudent. I also said that I appreciated the fact that uh, uh, his clients were thinking ahead, but I this is like two years off, so I don't want to, and the plans may change yeah. over time, so I was suggesting that he not worry about getting on a uh, on a, a uh, close agenda, nearby agenda. Just let it let this sit for a year, and uh, then maybe we can start consolidating some of these things. Have uh, have people in, you know, ten at a time or something like that. Yeah. So I, I talked to uh, what's the the part? I forget what Parmar it was uh, back in uh, November about this when the. the the uh, COVID was beginning to take effect on, and not, and not in, in uh, early January, I think it was, when the COVID was beginning to shut things down. And a lot of them were worried about it. And he said they weren't planning to do any construction. They put the construction off on this, uh, redo, redoing the motel for a year. I got a feeling it's going to be more than that now. Of course, it's a good time because they're not going to, you know, if they shut it down entirely, they're not going to have any, they're going to lose business. But if there's no business to be lost, it might be a good time to jump the gun on it, too. It's gonna, that's a business decision on their part. And if they end up putting the, if they want to take a chance that the plans are not going to change and put a sign up in the new proposed new location, it's at their own risk, but that's fine, too. Right. Um, so one other thing, um, I followed up on what Ken had mentioned about uh, the appeals period being stayed for uh, zoning appeals, the 20 days. And what I found was it wasn't in the governor's emergency orders. It was in the Supreme Judicial Court's orders. And the court... Uh, it basically entered an order that all civil statutes of limitation and deadlines uh, were told from March 17, 2020 through June 30 of 2020. So Ken was correct to a point, but the, uh, the order goes on to say uh, all deadlines were set 
uh, set forth in statutes were told by prior orders from March 17, 2020 through June 30, 2020, and will not be told any further unless there is a new surge and the court determines that a new or extended period of tolling is needed. Okay. And so that was in the order that was effective July 1. Uh, and that is the, the latest order from the court. So basically any uh, appeal period that was, you know, if you're only one day into it on March 17, uh, the next 19 days went by in June or in July. So uh, you basically, we are back in operation with 40 days. Okay. Or 20 days from the filing of a decision, I should say. Yeah, the only, the only catch to that is right now, Massachusetts cases are increasing, but are the increase that's going to raise a flag to anybody? We'll have to wait and see. Right. So as, as of the moment, it hasn't. Um, there, that may well change. Um, but the um, that concern we had that you could actually get a decision approved and you could actually build a project and then find that your neighbor was appealing uh, is off the table now. Okay. That was just for the period March 17th through June 30th. Okay. I haven't heard any more about that. Uh, the marijuana place that wants to move into the mall. Are they going to proceed with something to us or what are they waiting on? I haven't, I didn't, I uh, didn't get any feedback from them. So okay. they, maybe they were just doing their due diligence and getting their, Mailing list. Okay. So based on what you said, Bill, if some should we should I notify any of the people that have been looking to get a Zoom public hearing and let them proceed? Uh, I think we can. Um, okay. Again, uh, if I now that I know where to look, I can keep an eye on whether the uh, the court issues new orders. Okay. But um, it's been, um, so that was July 1. So that's been effective for six weeks. And, and there was nothing new today. So some of the simpler ones, I think we probably could proceed uh, with. Okay. I will notify the couple that there's, I think there's two or three that probably have a, there's interest, but no, I don't think there's overwhelmingly negative interest like there is in a couple of the other ones. I'll let them know what's going on and let them make the call. There's that, the one that we already had, we already scheduled the public hearing, but, for, but we continue. That was the one off of, uh, uh, was it Hyde Meadow? Yeah. And then there's the balloonist over there on Lawrence Plain. But the other ones, the one on, I mean, the uh, old Hadley Garage, Hadley Auto, and Kevin Michelson, those are, those are much higher interest and controversial. Yep. I think that's Kevin, a starting point. Yeah, Kevin has already been put out to uh, January. So I was thinking the, the flip side of the concern that somebody might say, I don't have the computer skills to participate, but I wanted to be heard, is the person who is going to tell us, I wanted to participate by Zoom so I didn't have to go. And sit in the room with all you people. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Uh, we Hadley Media did try uh, to um, do a combo Zoom and uh, and uh, TV for the uh, when the uh, select board announced the town media or the town administrator uh, finalists. And I think there were some glitches because the senior center wasn't up to speed. Their their internet wasn't connected, so it, it didn't work too well. But I think the other thing is we could talk maybe off the air with John about whether uh, you know, whether there are hybrid models available. But I think for the the non controversial accessory apartments, Zoom should be fine. Yeah, they could, and they can still call in by telephone. Is that also correct? Yes. Okay. 
And as host, of course, it's password protected. Uh, and as host, I have the ability to eject anyone okay. and not let them come oh, back. You better, you better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Love that power. Uh, haven't had to do it, but uh, in case we get these uh, strangers coming through, we have that ability. Yeah, I kind of doubt. Well, you never know. I would say we never, we haven't had a problem, but you never know what kind of uh, wildcats will show up. So, uh, so that is all that I have. I have nothing else. Anybody? Do I? Yeah. Do you all have anything? No, I'm all set. Nothing else, Mike. No, we're all set. I'll, I'll reprint this thing, uh, Jimmy, okay. so you can read a little better. Okay, we'll talk about it. Okay. Yep. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, meeting. Let's see. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. Good night. Good night. Good night.